Hi there and welcome back. My name is Doug and I have another fountain pen video for you today. Today I have a genuine, an absolutely genuine fake. So let's look at it right now. So a while back I did a video on the difference between copying and stealing and did a little bit of a, a rant about that. And um, I've noticed um, Waski Squirrel did a uh, video on the difference between a real Parker Sonnet and a fake Parker Sonnet and a copy Parker Sonnet. So I don't have a Parker, Parker Sonnet, so I noticed that on eBay there were quite a few Parker, Parker Sonnets for sale, and a lot of them were really, really cheap. So I was thinking that, well, I might be able to get a genuine Parker Sonnet for like 10 bucks, and I was lucky. I won the auction. And here it comes. This is the package I received today, almost a week from, from China. And it has a genuine Parker Sonnet in it with all of its frilly packaging. And, you know, you can just tell right from the get-go that this is the real deal. I mean, look at this. This is packed with care. You can keep this bubble pack on your shelf as a memento of this buying experience. And let's just get this uh, ASMR experience. Let's get the mic right down here. that genuine so here it is it says Parker it says sonnet it says France it even has a code on it look at that So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an evaluation of this pen, as I normally do. We're going to look at the parts and function. Uh, I'm going to clean it out and uh, ink it up. And I'm going to do some um, size comparisons and some measurements. And then we're going to do a writing sample. All the standard fare. Now, in addition, what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare it with this copy of a Parker Sonnet by the company Bauer, B-A-O-E-R, and it is a copy Parker Sonnet, but has branding on it that says Bauer. And it's very similar to the Parker Sonnet, the genuine Parker Sonnet. So I'm going to do a comparison between these two pens. One is a fake, and one is a copy. And we'll see the differences in price, the differences in writing. I'm anxious to see whether there is any difference. I don't know. And again, caveat emptor, I have never held a Parker sonnet. Uh, I've never seen a Parker sonnet in first person. But I'm also going to compare it to the Pilot Metropolitan. This is a genuine Pilot Metropolitan. This isn't a knockoff. I've done a review of this already. Uh, most of you know this pen. It's a very serviceable pen and they're very reasonable in price. And we'll see whether your money is worth getting a genuine fake, a genuine copy, or a genuine genuine for about the same price. Take one to find me. 
Okay, you've looked at uh, the size comparisons and the measurements of uh, these two pens. Let's look at some of the parts and features of this fake Parker Sonnet. Um, I've taken some close-up photos of this pen as well, and I'm going to overlay them on this video so that you can see some of the things to look for in a fake. Um, but let's look at the overview first. Uh, from the finial, there's a, a sort of a black dot in the center of the, fili uh, the finial, uh, and there is the classic Parker arrow clip. One of the things to look for in that arrow clip, if you're looking for a fake, is that the indents, apparently, of uh, engraving of those uh, feathers on the, the clip are not as deep on the fake. The clip feels very serviceable. And we go down to the cap band, which says, let's focus here, it says Parker. And I'm going to overlay some photos here of the Parker. And then Sonnet. France and this is the date code and this one said has three I's a Roman numeral three and a Q which according to my date coder says that this pen was made in 2010 I don't believe it for a second on the cap band there is uh, some filigree work here so little little bands but apparently this uh, cap band is a little larger on this fake than it is on the original and then the body goes down to the rounded end which also has a dot on it uh, now this is black on black so uh, if you got the silver one there would be a dot there this uh, Bauer 388 does not have that dot but it does have the dot little black dot on the top but the sonnet would have the black dot on the bottom it is a slip cap and I think there is a cap liner I'm trying to shine a light in here it looks like there's a cap liner in there that's uh, and there's a nut that holds the finial on And the pen posts very, very deeply and very securely. That section is plenty long and very smooth. There's a, a gold band that separates the body from the section. And you can feel it, but it's not uncomfortable at all. That's a very nice, it's very, it's a, a narrow section. If you know the sonnet, the sonnet has this narrow type section on it. This is a slim line pen, but boy, that feels really nice in the hand. I'm not a big fan of uh, these slim line pens, and that section is a bit small for me, but there's a lot of space there to write with. So the section itself is sort of, um, it flares out slightly at the end, and then there's a gold ring. It's very smooth. Um, it does not feel like some metal sections that are slippery. This is uh, some kind of plastic, I guess. Um, it's supposed to be resin, but it feels more like plastic. Um, but it doesn't feel slippery. Let's look at the nib. It uh, looks like a kind of a 5 size. It's very wide for a 5, and it has that particular Parker cross hatching on it. Um, it says it has the Parker P and then Parker. I guess the modern Parker sonnets do not have the uh, uh, gold markings on them, 18K. This is certainly not an 18K. Another way of telling whether this is a real 
uh, Parker Sonnet or not is to take a st strong magnet and put it up against the pen and yeah can't be gold if it's uh, sticking to a magnet now the back of the feed there try to get it in the light there very difficult to see but there is an F there and the F in that feed and that feed looks very similar to the to the real Parker same shape and everything but uh, that F looks pretty rough inside there that stamped plastic I haven't tried to get that nib out of there but I expect that the rest of the the nib has that same kind of unique shape of the of the Parker nib the original I've put a, uh, a Parker Quink ink washable blue cartridge in this pen and it fits perfectly there is the metal threads in that section and metal threads in the body Yeah, so metal body, metal threads. And it's surprisingly light for a metal pen. I put out the measurements and uh, the Bauer 388 is two grams heavier than the fake Parker Sonnet. And you can actually feel that. I'm surprised that you can feel such a small difference in weight but uh, that's the case and so far this pen feels very comfortable I can uh, write with it anywhere up and down that body so that's some of the features of this fake Parker Parker Sonnet and Let's just take a look at the Metro just for a second. It's roughly the same size as the fake Parker Sonnet. It's a different kind of look because this is a cigar shape and this is more of a tubular type shape. But the, the Pilot does post very deeply and very securely and it's very well balanced when you've got it in your hand and capped. Sorry, and posted. But that section isn't as long, and this is the... I've done a review on this already, but that step is a big problem for me. And you have that pilot medium nib. Uh, this is just a reliable writer. Every single time you pick it up, it writes, and it stays... Um, you can leave it for, for a month, and it will write after you pick it up. So I'm going to uh, come back with a writing sample and sort of compare how this pen writes to these two. And after that, we'll do some evaluation of this pen. I'm also going to uh, do a section on the history of the real Parker Sonnet, which I think is fascinating. Um, and you can get, of course, uh, real sonnets anytime you want from Parker. You can get them on Amazon. Uh, I'll post some uh, some Amazon um, sales for for the real one to show you what the price range is. And last time I looked, they were around one hundred and eighty dollars. I think that was Canadian. Uh, it might have been U.S. But anyway, we'll be back with a writing sample. Okay, so we're back to do a writing sample with the fake Parker Sonnet. Now I have inked it up with the Parker cartridge, Parker Quink, washable blue. It does come with a converter, so you can uh, use your own ink if you'd like to. Well, I thought I'd give this cartridge a try since I have it. 
So the pen posts very nicely, very deeply. And we have here the fake Parker sonnet with a, well, it was advertised as a fine nib, but it writes more like a medium. I must say, uh, I don't like this ink. It's very pale. It comes out very dark, but then it, it fades to a, a real pale, milky kind of blue. Anyway, let's listen to this. Well, I'm surprised. This is a very, very smooth nib. It has a hint of feedback. And it's very wet. Again, I've not done anything to this nib out of the box. Didn't come in a box, came in a lovely luxury plastic bubble wrap. In terms of stiffness, it's very stiff. There's no line variation whatsoever. A reverse. It writes very smoothly and very nicely in reverse. The pen can be written with unposted. Very nice and uh, feels more comfortable posted than it does unposted. Now let's see some quick writing here. It uh, keeps up very nicely. So um, I'm going to write with this for a bit before I do an evaluation on it. But uh, right, right at the outset, I'd say that I'm I'm surprised. I'm surprised that pen feels so nice. Um, I thought that the Bauer would be better. I did a review, gee, almost eight months ago on this pen. This pen does not post as deeply as the, the fake Sonnet does. The section is shorter and that step up is a little bit sharper, but not, not unduly. This one writes better unposted than posted. Feels better balanced when it's unposted. But the um, Bauer 388 is a Sonnet clone, I'd say. It's very smooth. Very wet very very wet this is this ink is um, also Parker this is Parker Quink uh, blue black Pen, uh, it is a, a medium.
plates like a medium. You can see it's about the same thickness as the, this the Parker Sonnet fake. But uh, a very pretty, very lovely pen. And then of course the Pilot Metro. It posts very deeply as well. This is a medium nib, but if you look at these two, this one's very much like a fine. And I've done a review on this uh, pen. It uh, the, its main problem for me is this this large step that's right here. Um, that gets very uncomfortable, but uh, it's a uh, really reliable pen. It writes first time, every time. No skipping. Uh, very wet. Uh, nice pen. Uh, so, I've done evaluations on two of these. And I'm going to write with the, the fake for a while and then come back and do an evaluation. But, uh, as I said, right out of the box, I am very surprised at the uh, at the lovely writing ability of this pen and these slim types of pens are not my cup of tea generally so anyway we'll be back with you in uh, a day or so before i get to the evaluation of this fake parker sonnet i'd like to take a few minutes to discuss the history of this famous parker fountain pen the sonnet if you'd like to skip right to the evaluation just use the timestamp link in the description below. For those of you still with me, thanks for listening. In my video review of the fake Jinhao Parker Duofold lookalike, I expounded on the history of the classic Duofold fountain pen for which Parker is justifiably famous. George Parker founded the Parker Pen Company in 1889, and Parker has been one of the top writing instrument manufacturers in the world for the last 130 years. Parker's pens evolved over the years with, with invention and innovation, as well as excellent design aesthetics. Before the invention of the ballpoint pen in the 1960s, Parker was either number one or number two worldwide in writing instrument sales. In 1931, Parker invented Quink, a quick-drying ink that eliminated the need for blotting. Quink is still sold by Parker today. In 1941, Parker developed the most widely used model of fountain pen in history, the Parker 51, a pen I will talk more about in an upcoming video review of my Wingsung 601A. In 1963, for the company's 75th anniversary, founder George Parker's son, Kenneth, and the designer who also designed the Parker 45, 61, T1, and the VP liquid lead pen, Don Doman, designed the Parker 75, which replaced the ubiquitous Fit Parker 51 and remained Parker's flagship pen until 1994, when it was replaced by the Parker Sonnet. In the late 80s, Parker felt they need to revitalize the $10 to $100 gift market and commissioned Hollington Associates of London to design a completely new ballpoint pen and pencil, the result being the Insignia in 1991, designed by Jeff Hollington. In 1993, Parker again engaged Jeff Hollington to design a fountain pen that would be versatile and attractive enough to replace the Parker 75. Hollington himself is quoted saying, quote, Pens are very, very simple products in some ways. They have rotational symmetry, their size is constrained by ergonomics, as is the shape to a large extent. They are very well evolved. The clip, for instance, works well in pockets and bags and stops the pen from rolling off the table. So when designing a pen, you have only a small space in which to move. Add the need for a strong brand authenticity and the space becomes very tight indeed. That's why, in my opinion, properties like proportion, balance, and elegance are very important. It always astonishes me how badly most pen products rate in these respects. 
We used to work and fight really hard to get a shape where the cap looked equally good on the front and the back of the pen, where the step between the cap and the barrel was minimized or non-existent. In a product of this size, a tenth of a millimeter is worth worrying about." Unquote. In 1993, Parker was acquired by the Gillette Company, which already owned Papermate, the makers of the disposable ballpoint pen. Subsequently, in 2000, Gillette sold the company to Rubbermaid, which then owned Parker, Rotring, Sharpie, Reynolds, Papermate, Waterman, and Liquid Paper. In 2009, Rubbermaid closed the Parker plant in New Haven, England, and then the Parker factory in Janesville, Wisconsin, and relocated all production to France. It then abandoned all of its traditional retail outlets in North America and altered their traditional lifetime guarantee to a two-year warranty. The current Parker website offers a sonnet fountain pen in 42 different finished nib combinations ranging from $140 to $495 US. Okay, now I'm back for an evaluation of this fake Parker sonnet. I've written with it quite extensively now, and, you know, going into this, uh, getting this pen and uh, planning the video and everything, I almost had my mind made up about what my conclusion was going to be. I was going to compare these three pens. My conclusion was going to be the Pilot Metro is a really nice serviceable pen. I don't like it personally, uh, but if you must have something like a Parker Sonnet, then getting the Bauer 388 for three dollars and change um, is a really good compromise. Uh, it should write about the same. I mean, I was expecting this to be a Chinese pen. Like, this is a Chinese pen. This is a Japanese pen. But, after writing with this pen, I've come to realize that it's excellent. I was expecting cheaper materials. I was expecting a pretty typical cheap Chinese fountain pen experience. Uh, nothing on the par of uh, my pen BBS pens, uh, but I was mistaken. So let's look at an evaluation for this. This again is the uh, Parker fake. On it. And it has a fine nib. Now, I have switched out the color. I went with Parker Quink bottled ink. Um, I wanted to try out the converter just to be complete. And the converter works fine. Uh, you can take the converter apart. It's, uh, it's the cheapest part of the pen, actually. But um, if you wanted to get an actual original Parker converter, it will fit uh, in this pen. But I, I hated that uh, cartridge blue uh, that was uh, in the pen before, so I swapped it out. So the ink, whoops, right backwards here. The ink is Parker Quink. which you know comes from 1941, black. My evaluation procedure, as always, is design and build. Writing and feel. Look and value. Each one of these categories is out of four. Four being perfect, three being above average, two being a fail, I'm sorry, two being just a bare pass, one being a fail, and zero being a complete no-show washout. So in terms of design and build, uh, this pen was designed in 93-94 as you, uh, if those of you that uh, followed the history part of this video, uh, by Hollington D Industrial Design, and it has endured as a popular design until today. 
Um, since this is a fake, and uh, this fake copies every aspect right down to the, uh, the date codes on the cap band. Um, I can't argue with the design because it is the Parker design. Um, where I thought there would be flaws with this pen would be mostly with the build. Uh, however, I, I can't find any flaws in this build. The nib may be steel, but you can get a Parker Sonnet steel um, that probably writes just like this. Um, the materials are good. The fit and finish is extremely well done. So, you know, in a blind test, this is a four out of four. In terms of writing and feel, this is where I was really surprised. Uh, because again, I, I've said this a number of times, I'm not into slim pens. And I gave this pen to my wife because she has smaller hands than I do. And it's a little bit more comfortable for her. And it's a lovely pen. She likes it. Um, I don't write with this Pilot Metropolitan, not only just because of the step, but because of the, uh, the section is, is so uh, tiny. But this is very comfortable. Um, I was surprised I could write with it for a long time. Uh, it's well balanced, especially when it's posted. I don't think I have another pen that posts and is as comfortable as this. Uh, so I, again, you're looking at a four here. In terms of the look, well, it's just drop dead gorgeous, isn't it? It's beautiful. Uh, especially in the black, and it comes in a lot of different finishes. As I showed in the history thing, there's something like 42 different varieties of, uh, of the Parker Sonnet in different, uh, different uh, finishes. Uh, so beautiful, beautiful pen. The look is just gorgeous. So another four. Now, how do I ding it on value? This is where we get into some difficult territory. This pen is $8.50. That's what I got it for on the auction US with free shipping. Now this, the real pen should be in the neighborhood of $150, um, either Canadian or US. I've seen it sort of on both sides of that. Um, but for $8.50, it's an incredible bargain for a pen that writes this well. So we're looking at a perfect score here. This, this really surprised me. 16 out of 16. The question comes down to one of ethics. Uh, this is not a ripoff if you know you're buying a, a Chinese copy, right? You know what you're getting into. However, this is a branded pen. It's sold as a Parker. Um, it's fine to emulate. Uh, imitate or pay homage to a pen and copy its good design, building practices and things like that, but passing off your work as someone else's trademark is just dishonest. Can you live with yourself if you buy one of these pens? Inter international trademark law is really having a difficult time with with these types of violations by, uh, by uh, different manufacturers around the world. I'm not going to focus just on the Chinese. Uh, they're not the only ones that are doing it. So it's basically up to the consumer, isn't it? And uh, with the rampant success of stores like Walmart and Amazon, we can readily see where consumers' allegiances lie, don't we, with their pocketbook. So I was expecting to come down on the side of, well, you have other choices other than getting a fake Parker Sonnet. You have this choice. Um, you have this choice. You have many different choices uh, that are in, in the same neighborhood or uh, even less expensive. This pen is $3.88 US. Um, so it's, it's up to you. If you absolutely must have a Parker Sonnet, I would say go ahead and go to Amazon and get a good deal on a Parker Sonnet for about $150. Um, get a gold nib, nib. I'm sure the gold nib uh, uh, writes a bit better than this. This is very stiff. It's a steel nib. But uh, I can't say that this is a lousy Chinese knockoff. It is a fake. Yes, absolutely. It's a fake. But uh, it is what it is. So um, do with that information as you will. Again, thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and like and subscribe. 
and ring that bell if you want a notification of new videos. And that's all she wrote. Moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow.